Good morning, Sandy. Welcome to the JW channel. How are you this morning? I'm well, John. Pretty cold, but that's, nice. That's it. After a sunrise like that, you got to be nice, but it's, it's pretty freaking cold. Whereabouts are we? Colorado Platform, yeah. Sydney, Australia. Fantastic. Uh, make sure that uh, everybody stays at the end. Why? Because I'm going to give three tips for taking better sunrise photos. Sandy, uh, thanks for coming along this morning. Tell me why you do this. Okay, well every morning I get up and photograph the sunrises. Um, in part, it keeps me sane. It's the best time of the morning and it's, for me, the best way to start the day. Fantastic. How did you start photography? Let's go right back to the very beginning. What was your first memory of a camera? Okay, well it wasn't, oh yeah, no, it was as a kid. Um, I used to do a lot of sports photography as a kid, but then, um, got more into it with landscape and seascape and then about 16, 17 years got into doing the sunrises every morning because it, I was up and I was at the beach and I went how will this work for me and so I did a lot of, I started then. That's fantastic and what was your first camera? My very first camera was a Canon T and I've gone blank on what it was, but it was a Canon, and as you can see, still a Canon photographer. It's Ford and Holden, it's Nikon and Canon <laughs> sort of thing. How did Canon grab hold of you? Um, in part because once I've got the um, their gear, I stayed with them, but I really love Canon's gear. I love how it feels, I love how the pho it photographs, I just enjoy it. You know, these days we've got phones, we've got cameras, we've got video machines, you know, a lot of these things were just way out of the price range for consumers and now it's so much more accessible. Yeah. Uh, people's creativity has been totally redefined in the last, particularly the last five years. Tell me about the time when you, you've, you'd taken a photo but all of a sudden you said, yeah, that is a really awesome photo. Can you remember what it was and how it really energized you? Actually, one of the one of the ones that really did it was in about 2000 and it was actually at Colorado Beach. And it was New Year's Day because I always came out on New Year's Day and photographed just to try to start the year a bit better. And the rays came through, there was cloud, and the rays came through from below and from above, and it was this quite majestic photo that I took a look at, and life was pretty messed up at the time. And I took a look at this photo, and there was something about it that said there were all these clouds, and it was kind of horrible, but then these light, this light just shone through from below and above, and something about it said, that's what life is like. There are these clouds and they're horrible and whatever, and there's always this light, and we don't always see it, but every now and then we get this glimpse of it, and it is stunning, and that was probably it. It was 2000, New Year's Day. Holy cow. Yeah. So yeah. Pretty much the change of the century. It was, it, yeah, yeah, it was 2000, maybe it was 2001. Now I'm gone blank, but it was a New Year's Day one. The photo just, I've actually still got it on my wall at home. Holy cow. Yeah. And people would obviously pay a visit to your house and say. Well, but yeah, it was just, um, it was just one of those moments that kind of reflected something in nature and something about how my life was and what I kind of wanted it to then be. So yeah. And you know we all look to people to learn from their experiences. Uh, I remember as a kid you know my mother introduced me to photography. Gabriel, hi mum. You're gonna give mum a wrap. Uh, and uh, she and uh, my grandmother on her side, Nina, yeah. gave me this thing called a box brownie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To tell, explain to people in the digital age what, what a box brownie is. I didn't have a box brownie. Aren't you unlucky? <laughs> I did not have a box brownie. 
I'm not even going to hugely be able to explain it to you. <laughs> okay, I'll move. <laughs> so can you delete we'll, we'll, that? We'll, we'll go to a we'll go to a photo and see what a box brownie looks like. That, I know, do know what they look like because yeah. a friend had one. A yeah. friend's father had one. Yeah. But and then he kept it. But I I didn't have that, and I don't come from a creative family. Yeah. So yeah, I wasn't around that kind of stuff. So I started with my box brownie and you know went to the school library and things like that. Did you, you know, go and read books or seek out anybody? You just got got a camera and went and started doing it. Sort of uh, thing? As I said, I first of all did sports stuff, but then um, life got a little bit messed up. I was living in the US and one of the things that a therapist I was seeing used to give me these things to go and take a photo of something something yeah and I was living in Colorado Rocky Mountains and so there's always something to go and take a photo of and that's really where the love of it grew because um, being in nature and being outdoors there was something about it that just connected me to something that was really simple and really beautiful because there's, there's nothing like getting up early in the morning Seeing, yeah. the, seeing the first light. I, I, I also lived in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. Good, good slice of God's country over there. Uh, and I just remember waking up, looking outside the door window and the light hitting the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot of big mountains here in Australia, but I tell you what, the, the mountains over there, majestic, okay, yeah, it's a nice word, but these guys, they just, you know, they, they grab you by the throat and they, you yeah, go, they wow. Do. They do, and it's a it's a different kind of beauty to what it is here. But there's something life can get really complicated and crowded and crazy. And in photography, you've got to remove everything. Like less is more yeah. in a photo. And so there's something about going out, even now and watching the waves come. There's something about going out and framing a photo that removes all this mess and crowd from it and noise from it you get this really simple beauty and that's what i yeah that's what really captured me about photography what do you think of ansel adams you know he's supposed to be you know uh somebody who broke ground yeah brought photography to millions and millions of people yeah doesn't matter which country you are in the world ansel adams is yep. is known inspired generations what do you like about his work his work He's done a lot of it is the mountains. Um, some of his most well-known, or most, most well-known to me are the ones from Yosemite and places like that. And I think that you look at it and there's the light that he uses, a lot of it's black and white, yeah. and it's just, I don't know, there's something surreal about it, and yeah. yet it is what it is. It, it is what you see, um, but, I think it brings, na I think one of the things that it did as well, or does for me, is it just brings this nature and it reminds you, nature always reminds me how small I am compared to the expanse of the yeah. world and I, 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 the national I, parks. I agree. If you go and get a print of Ansel Adams and you put it on the wall at home, your house has changed forever. Oh yeah, yeah. And the look and the view that he gives you of seeing you know, if you don't get out and into nature, I have friends who go, but you've seen one sunrise, haven't you? Doesn't that mean you see them all? Even national parks, and you look at that and it makes you want to go to places and be there and experience it. And I think those sorts of things are great as well. Well, you know, uh, as you know, I've been doing my sunrise project, and that's yeah, how we met. Which is uh, awesome. Oh, I'm uh, loving it. It's. it's uh, I, I used to do a lot of sitting around the house at home, researching everything on YouTube, uh, getting some great equipment, and then promptly doing nothing with it. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a, a, a mistake that a lot of people make. Yeah. It doesn't take that much effort to drive 10, 15, 20 minutes maybe. We're lucky we're, we're living down yeah. here. But it doesn't matter where you live, there's something going to be happening, isn't there? Yeah, there is, there is. And it's always different. Like, we've just experienced, you You got here and the cloud had already changed and yeah. there was colour. But when I first arrived, there was not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. And so it looked like it was going to be one of those where you're photographing the patterns in the 
rock platform and getting an orange sun, which is still beautiful. And then these clouds appeared yep. and we got the red and the pinks and you'd have missed it. Yep. So we had Ansel Adams. He was 1930s, oh, something yeah, like yeah, that, really, 20s, yeah, 30s. Yeah. Large format plate, yes, plate that photography. Yes, used to carry into nature as yeah. well. Like, yeah. This thing is, I think, you know, with all the equipment, it's about the size of a small it's, Volkswagen or something. When you see photos of the site behind the scenes of him and his equipment, you just, it blows your mind that he took that into nature. Like, yeah. But there are bloody grizzly bears there oh, too. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. reckon they would have been chased <laughs> off a few sites. So that was then. Today, I know one of the guys that I see a lot on YouTube, uh, his name is Peter McKinnon. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking photography. If you like taking pictures, if you own a camera, you wander about snapping pics, this video is for you. Specifically targeted more towards beginners or people that aren't necessarily professional, but I wanted to go through a few things that beginners make mistakes on quite frequently when they're starting out in this craft. I've looked inside myself and I've found some things that I wish I had done better when I was starting photography out. A few little things that if I had just paid more attention to, I would have been taking better photos faster, which means potentially more business if that's something that you're looking to take photography towards, or just you're being a better artist, you're being a better photographer. From contemporary times that you really enjoy their work and you learn from? I love, there's a guy who a year or two ago moved to New Zealand, but he was a Wollongong guy called Bill Patino. And um, his work is amazing. He's does nature and initially it was mainly around um, Wollongong and the south coast down that area but he's, there's a real rawness to his work and um, I love his work so yeah fantastic now I am self-taught yep um, but I look and, and look at um, different work and there's a lot of Sydney people who through Instagram which I love. I That's really a game changer love. too, isn't it? But through Instagram, you find these unbelievably creative people who, um, yeah, which I love. I love seeing, and you can see people on the Northern Beach go, where was that? Oh, look what they've done. Completely different view of being in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so just pretend I'm a really, really rich person. I've just given you a first class ticket to fly anywhere in the world to do the sunrise. Where are you going? To do the sunrise. Um, Remember, it's a first class ticket. It's a first class ticket. You, you have to get off the plane, all right? Oh dear, where am I going? Do you know what? Probably the Maldives. Yeah? And right. I know I was trying to um and ah between whether I'd go somewhere like Norway, which I've never been, yeah, I'd probably go to the Maldives. I went there years and years ago. Yeah. I was a little bit in photog into photography, but not a lot. Yeah. The speed with which the sun, it's so close to the equator, the sun just sort of seems to go boom, it's there. And I would, having a little bit of knowledge now about my craft, I would love to go back there and revisit and do some there. Wow. Yeah. That, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, um, another question that I've been uh, thinking about uh, you're a professional photographer I I love your work I consider you an authority you know, <laughs> particularly down here sort of thing I know you're a very humble realistic person <laughs> uh, sort of thing tell us about uh, how you started your business okay so as I've alluded to I had like life was a bit crazy and I had a lot of mental illness stuff going on with um, some post-traumatic stress, some depression and things like that and I would get up early and I would be at the beach and it was, it would refresh me and it would bring life back to me and anyway I started taking photos of it and then people started buying it and I kind of went, oh this works, I actually started doing the markets first um, before having a website, I would do 
Manly Markets on the third Saturday, Mossman Markets on the first Saturday, Narrabeen Markets on the fourth Saturday, <laughs> wow. and which were, was a lot of hard work, but I discovered that people would buy my work that I did. When I look back on it, I go, oh, not as good as it. That must have been a hell of a buzz to it, see that. It was, um, and it was really enjoyable, and then I sort of found myself doing it every day, uh, which was from about 2004 I've done every single morning and got a web first of all got quite a simple website designed where you couldn't buy like I didn't have a cart with it and just bit by bit grew it and social media as we just said like Instagram is a lot is a um, game changer but um, social media is a big changer because you can do it you can put yourself out there quite cheaply yeah. um, and say, this is what I do, this is where I am, this is the work I do. Um, and so bit by bit it's grown and it's still what I love. I would never swap coming out first thing in the morning and it's also my sane place. When I have to rush from the beach, life feels kind of crazy, yeah. um, but it's my sane grounding thing in summer yeah. not at the moment i've got shoes on but in summer it's barefoot i reckon this would be the best time of year because there's nobody down here but in summer i'm barefoot so yeah. that i connect with the earth yeah, and i do right. all of that kind the of sand stuff your toes. but in winter it's too cold for me and my fingers are freezing right now but um it is where i connect with something that is bigger than me and it has happened to become a business for me Congratulations. Yeah. I'm going to buy they, one of your things one day. They say that if you do what you love, you know, you don't sort of necessarily, it's not work and it's so true. Mark Twain said, make your vocation your vacation. There you go. I, I, missed, my ca I missed the um, quote, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, for all the technical people, let's quickly go through your, your gear. What do you got? Okay, so I have a Canon um, 5D Mark IV, upgraded as you heard earlier. I'm a Canon person but upgraded last year from a Canon, from a 5D2. Yep. So 5D Mark IV, I use leaf filters. What does that mean? So I, I don't know much about filters, so. That's a graduated um, neutral density, so the above's darker, below's lighter. So as we've seen today, the sky was quite bright. Um, the rock platform's darker, so it just balances out the light so that you get a balanced photo there. Um, so I happen to use Lee photo, um, Lee um, filters. Um, I had a graduated, uh, sorry, a neutral density one, a solid one as well, which I was using earlier to get some um, long exposures. So that one is, as you can see, yeah, battered. That, that's, that can see some work over That the can has seen some, battered, some battering and some dropping, but a neutral density one, which allows me when it's light to um, do some long exposures yep. um, in it. That's how you get that wave movement yep, sort of thing. Yep, slow the um, silky smooth, which yep. a lot of my photos are, although this morning hasn't been quite so many. Um, what else have I got? I've got um, my Manfrotto oh, 190X um, tripod, yep. so you'll always find me carrying that around, unless I'm in the bush where I've had to walk a long way, then I'll have a lighter one, yep. um, but it's still a Manfrotto lighter one. What do you got in the bag? In my bag, <clears throat> so my bag is it's a actually, soft bag too, huh? this is a new bag, and this guy, this is a local guy, can I give him a Yeah, plug? give him a wrap. Okay, so this is Poker, Desi Poker Designs, I hope I've pronounced it properly. Yep. So John's a um, Northern Beaches guy who's yep. designed a light, active... Is he a photography guy? Or he's is a photography he... guy who wanted something that was light and easy and handy. Soft bag, yeah. So soft bag. So I've got um, a pocket design, a um, large one here. I've got another Canon in the bag because I was earlier taking some photos with an old Canon 7D. <laughs> Look at the okay, size so of that. Okay, so another Canon 7D with a 70 to 200. That's the size of a bottle of wine. Um, for just in case there's swell around, doing some waves, 
nature, different things like that. So it gives me a couple of views of um, different um, views of nature. Oh, I didn't go on here. I've got my 16 to 35 mil here because I tend to work very, oh, there goes my bag. That's lucky it's a soft bag. I tend to um, do quite wide photos. Yeah. So yeah. What do you think the future of photography is? Look, I think it's, I think there's something really, I'd probably say, there's a degree to which it's smartphones, isn't it? It's definitely becoming lighter and even mirrorless um, yeah. cameras, which is so light and convenient and it's, it's heavy having I, I, I remember picking up a, a, a Nikon D3, which I used to always aspire to. And, uh, uh, a girlfriend of mine, Kim, she she uh, inherited a D3. Said, Jesus, it was, it was it was like five kilos or something. Yeah, I know, that was without I know, the class. I know. Um, friends of mine have like the 200D or the 80D, and the difference in weight to the 5D. They'll pick mine up and go, my goodness. Yeah. Um, it's you know, I probably think it's going at least mirrorless. Yeah. Um, just because of the convenience of having them. The quality on smartphones is unbelievable now. Yeah. Um, and it means, you know, they say, what's the best photo? It's the one, you know, what's the best gear? It's the one that you have right with you at that moment that allows you to take a photo. And a, um, a smartphone allows you to be out and anywhere and capture the moment. And you know, they say we're missing out on, we process information differently because we're trying to capture it immediately rather than enjoy it. Yeah. There's that aspect that's a bit sad, but I tend to think the quality is just becoming unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, I've been given a new camera or I've, I've got a flash new phone. What are your three tips to get out and do it? Okay, tip number one get up and get out there yeah um, don't miss out like we miss out on so much because we just don't even get out there so tip number one would be get out and use it whether it, sunrise to me is the best time of the day yeah um, so so get out there number two is it's probably carrying on from number one but um practice practice what you're doing and take more photos. Like um, a friend of mine started doing the photography and came out in sunrises with me. And I'd say, change your settings, change them, take a photo, work out what works, work out what doesn't work and learn that way yep. um, would be number two. And the third one would be um, to just understand the effect that light has on your camera and to learn that um, you can affect sort of depth of field, which is probably not a simple option now. You can affect the speed of the water um, or whatever it is, how much you freeze action. Learn what those things and how those things, those things impact your um, camera. And the best way to do it, John said a little while ago, YouTube, there was somebody on YouTube, I think he said, get out there, you know, use your computer, Google, read, it is all accessible to us right now. Take a look at, at people on Instagram that you like. Um, see what they do. A lot of people put their settings up. Yeah. Learn what they do and um, yeah, but get out there and do it. My, my three tips for what they're, what they're worth. You're mighty uh, crap when I just yeah. listen to I, I, No, I think they're, they're all very valid because we all learn from each other. Uh, my three tips is a little bit of pre-planning the yeah, day yeah. before. I, I don't mean sitting down there and having a, a great big, you know, council of war meeting about what I'm going to do tomorrow. Just think about it. Um, my next tip after that is be consistent, yep, like you were yep, saying. Yep. Get every out there day. doing it every day. And the thing for me, uh, my third tip, is share it with people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, other people might actually appreciate your work and I've I, certainly found that out. Yeah. Uh, so Instagram, YouTube, uh, print it off and give it to your mum for Christmas. You know? and, uh, um, it's an interesting one because you just do what you do, you get up every day and you do what you do 
and you do share it and then you hear from these random people that that's what they the difference that that makes to their day that they weren't out there but they actually took a look and went that makes my day and you kind of go wow so yeah sharing it is a massive thing because we never know how it might impact somebody else yeah and what they're going make their through. day a bit happier yeah get them out most there. definitely well, sandy thanks for coming along this morning and where are we going to next we're off to philip the media student can we do that one again yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're off to see Philip, the, Philip media... the media student from Macquarie University. That's awesome. Thanks very much, Sandy. <laughs> My pleasure, John.